Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look at overall performance of OS X Leopard on the base model iMac G4. That's the one that I have right here. It has a gig of RAM now and 80 gig hard drive in order to be sort of acceptable, but it does not meet the minimal requirement for running Leopard, which is an 867 MHz uh, PowerPC G4 CPU. It has GeForce 2 and Max graphics, so no core image. So let's see how it runs. Let's boot her up first. And let's see what happens. booting up now. It's pretty bright in here so that's why you might not be able to see the screen all that well. I'll up the brightness as soon as it has booted up. go okay I'll just uh, up to brightness a little bit right now there we go that's much better I can tell from the viewfinder here Okay, so this is OS X Leopard. We're all very familiar with it. Let's open up about this Mac. There we go. As you can see, we're rocking a 700 megahertz PowerPC G4 with a gigabyte of SD RAM. And if we open up the system profiler, we can see that we have an 80 gigabyte Seagate drive. It's divided in two partitions. One is still rocking OS 9. I decided to upgrade the Tiger partition to Leopard. Where were everything? Here's the GeForce 2 MX GPU. So this is most definitely the base model and the very first iMac G4. It's just been upgraded a little bit. RAM is maxed out. Pretty good drive. Hard drive that is. Has a DVD drive now, so I can do more stuff with it, like you saw in the previous video. And now let's take a look at some real-time performance here. Let's open up Safari to see uh, how fast we can get on the web. Takes a little while. Especially loading web pages is taking its time. I'm connected to Ethernet, so my connection is most definitely not the bottleneck here. There's the beach ball of death. Not a very convincing start. Yeah, so far crashed. Let's try 10 for Fox instead. I've had better luck with that anyway. Safari 5 seems to be a little bit glitchy on uh, Leopard. So let's open up 10 for Fox here. It's the most up-to-date browser you can get for a power PC anyway. So this should have the preference. Let's go to google.com. Well, that's Google Maps. Just go to Google. There we go. There's Google. Loading all the ad shenanigans that uh, is on the internet today is really, really dragging this system down. Especially if you're going to go visit some heavier websites. Let's visit the website of CNN. Let's see how that renders. At least we can read the headlines first. Which is something, I guess. All about the Trump. 
who should be executed on site anyway. But as you can see, web browsing is well nearly impossible on Leopard on the, on this kind of hardware. So that's not really what it's really good at or useful for anymore. Let's see how it runs in a word processing environment. So let's open up Microsoft Word 2008. Pretty much the most sluggish running version of Office ever made. Doesn't even doesn't even matter if you're running Intel hardware or PowerPC. It's just it's gonna run like shit anyway. That's just the way Office 2008 was. But you really just sort of need it if you want DocX compatibility on older machines, or if you uh, don't have a license for Office 2011 or 2016 now, or a Mac new enough to run them. Well, PowerPC Max Limited 10.5 and Office 2011 will run from 10.6 and up, so... You know, there's that. But uh, Word came up pretty well. You know, typing response is pretty good. I'm not a very fast typer on camera on this keyboard because I actually think the keyboards on the G4, you know, the Apple Pro keyboard, or what do you want to call this thing, it's it's just it's a complete mush board, really. Oops, sorry about that. But it works. Don't save. There you go. So word works fine. Well, so do Excel and PowerPoint, really, but I'll just open up Excel just for shits and giggles. There we go, came up pretty quickly. Definitely workable here. So for office work, it's definitely just fine under uh, Leopard. I think Leopard is a bit more visually appealing than Tiger is. That's also the main problem because Leopard has quite a lot of bloat in it, and you really need to de-bloat it a lot in order to make it run sort of good. But the main problem with this machine is the fact that it does not have core image. And you can really tell if you try to open up a folder right here. You can see the animation is very sluggish because the CPU has to do uh, the acceleration part. There is 2D acceleration to some degree, but no th real proper 3D acceleration um, for the operating system itself. That's why you don't get a translucent menu bar or anything like that. So that's, you know, that's a bit of a downside, but, you know, it works. It's pretty good for media consumption, though. So let's just uh, open VLC here. I'll uh, connect to my network here. Come on. Let's go. Connect. I'm just locking out my NAS here. Let's see, let's open up video. There we go. For instance, if we go to, let's see here. Oh, sure, let's open up Brickleberry. Please note that this is AVI, so this is, I think this is XVID. Yeah, this is XVID encoded. So something you really need to uh, take note of with PowerPC hardware, especially the G4 and the G5, that they have the Altivac engine built into the CPU. This engine is very, very good at decoding video, but only if it's not encoded in H.264. It, it will really just, you know, totally die if you use uh, H.264. You really have to stick to DivX or XVID, and uh, that will run absolutely fine, even up to HD resolutions. So right here, I've got a couple of episodes of Brickleberry. Um, it's not really that much a... Uh, of an enjoyable show in my opinion, but it's definitely uh, over the top and sometimes it's hilarious if you're a bit uh, intoxicated, I'll uh, put it that way. But this is 720p, compressed with XFID, and let's, let me show you how that runs. No quick time, I don't want to play with you, fuck off. So, I'll just do it a little bit differently, open with VLC, and I'll show you that is perfectly capable of running full screen 720p on a 700MHz T4 because of the Altivec engine. 
The coders of VLC really knew how to optimize it for Altifac. It's really working well. As you can see, no real frame drops. I'll just uh, stop right there because it becomes, uh, you know, inappropriate really quickly. So that's XFID. Of course, lower resolutions of H.264 will work up to 480p, but you can't really play 720p H.264 on here. For instance, let's see, what is this then? This is all H.264. This is Futurama, this is 720p as well. It just keeps opening fucking QuickTime. I don't want QuickTime. QuickTime is a completely disastrous standard. Let's open up VLC again. As you can tell, it's not even putting an image on the screen. It's just not able to keep up. So that's H.264 720p. So there you can really see the difference between XFID and H.264. H.264 and LTVEC don't go together. XFID and, and DIFX really go well with LTVEC optimization. So if you got media and you want to watch it on your Iron Mac G4 or your Power Mac G4 or whatever, you might, uh, might be surprised how well it will run as soon as you re-encode your media to uh, really work well with LTVAC optimizations. So convert them to DivX or XVID. Or just, you know, that will work just fine. You can really use this thing as a media consumption device, no problem. And like I said, you can use it for, uh, you know, office work very well as well. You can, uh, of course, use it as a music player, especially in my case, because I have the, uh, the Apple Pro speakers that go with this thing. They sound really, really well. So, you know, you can just play your music library on there and it will work just fine as well. So they're not completely useless, these machines, but uh, you definitely need to be very specific about your use case nowadays because you can't just use them as a throw around machine to do everything you want. I mean, browsing the web on a G4, 700 megahertz is just not really possible anymore. It's really, really downer because these machines are very fun. They look good, they work well. The G4 and IMX are pretty darn reliable as well. The only time when they really go is when the motherboard goes or the logic board. But everything else is pretty much rock solid. So yeah, that was just a little bit uh, of a quick overview of uh, some performance of the iMac G4 in uh, a couple of use cases. Web browsing did not go so well. Office work was fine. Media consumption is very good if you stick to specific codecs and uh, stay away from H.264. And, uh, you know, just regular browsing around the OS is quick enough to not become annoying all that quickly. So, that pretty much concludes my video on uh, iMac G4 performance on Leopard. And in general, actually. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.